Hola, welcome to my very first video. Today I'm gonna show you guys kind of my version of an everyday look, but I'm also gonna walk you through the steps of how to do your foundation, how to do your eyeballs. I also have two new products with me today. We've got the Mix Can't Stop Won't Stop Foundation and we've got the e.l.f. Camo Concealer, which I've never used either of these two before. But we're gonna find out if they're gonna work for my very oily skin and we'll see how it goes with it. So I'm going to do two different ways to apply this foundation because I've never used it before. So we'll see how it applies with either like brush versus, ver I can't speak. Brush versus sponge. So I'll do one side in brush and then the other side with the sponge. And always make sure you're going in downward motions because most of us have peach fuzz and if you go like in little buffing motions or if you go up against the skin you're gonna raise all of that and create more texture that we don't want on our skin now normally i would do my eyeballs first just to avoid any fallout but today since the eye look i'm gonna be doing is one that at least i'm fairly comfortable with i'm gonna do my foundation first some people are also asking me how to color match I feel like the best way I can explain it is the your veins kind of tell you what your undertone is going to be. If your veins look like mine where you can't really see them too much, and that's kind of hard to pick it up on camera, but <laughs> if your veins don't really show up too much, you're more of a neutral undertone. And if they show up more on the blue side or more purple, you have more of a pink undertone. And if they show up more green, you have more of a yellow undertone. But one thing I also feel like is important too is surface tone and undertone are two very different things. Some people that their face gets really red, especially like when they drink or when they take off their makeup, their face gets really red. So they're like, I have a pink undertone because my face is red. But then you look at their chest and their chest is really yellow. Surface tone is just exactly what it says. It's on the surface. Undertone is more of like your true tone. It's more and I'm pretty sure I'm not explaining this the best way possible, but it's mainly because I'm on camera and I'm slightly nervous. And then for concealer, I feel like everybody has a different opinion on, con on choosing concealer colors. For me, I personally like going more on the pinker side for my concealers, just because it doubles as a color corrector if you go with a pink concealer. When it comes to concealer, it everyone asks, should I go lighter, should I go darker, should I match my skin? It really just depends on what you wanna do with your concealer. Oh shit, I just got concealer in my hair. If you're doing what I'm doing, which is to brighten, color correct, and just like kind of contour with it, you wanna go a little bit lighter. But if you're using it like around and you're on your face just to like cover up some pimples, you would go pretty much the same color as your foundation. For placement of concealer, everybody's face is different. I usually match, I usually put my concealer, especially if it's lighter, wherever the light naturally hits me. So a little bit down the center of my nose is where I go, especially if you want to make your nose look a little bit slimmer. A little bit on the chin, and of course where I already put it under my eyes. My skin looks dry as hell. Maybe because I've been slightly slacking on my nighttime skincare. Next is contour, and the contour product I'm gonna be using is the Fenty Matchstick in the shade Amber. A common question is what's the difference between contour and bronzer? Bronzer is gonna be more to give you that sun-kissed tan look. Contour is gonna be to sculpt out the face. So contour is meant to mimic shadows while bronzer is meant to mimic like where the sun hits you. Contour is gonna sharpen everything up, gonna hollow the things that you want to look slimmer. Bronzer is just gonna warm everything up and it's gonna bring a little bit more life into the skin. As far as placement, one way that you can always nail your placement, you can take the back of your brush and put it at the top of your ear and then kind of lay it flat. Right down here is where your contour is gonna go every single time and you'll nail your you'll nail your placement every time i prefer going with the brush and picking up a little bit of product and just kind of tapping it alongside here we have to contour away all those chips and cheetos and fancy cakes and pizza that i've been eating this is one of my favorite brushes for cream contour it's a foundation brush from sephora it's the number 56 it's nice and dense. It's not too fluffy, but it's not 
a stiff like foundation brush like something like this it's a little bit more softer than this guy is it's got slightly less bristles but it's dense enough where you can pack your product on and you can like blend everything upwards now for contour you always want to put it just where your shadows naturally where you naturally cast shadows you wouldn't want to put them like for me obviously i wouldn't even bother putting anything up on my forehead because i have bangs but for anyone that doesn't have bangs if you want to contour your forehead you want to use a bronzer instead of a contour because if you put contour up there you don't naturally have a shadow up there if you put contour up there it's just going to look like you have an invisible hat all the time bronzer is just going to look like the sun hit you there and it'll kind of shrink down your forehead if you if you want to achieve that look i think this is one of my favorite parts of contour because it's the part that makes your face look the slimmest and as i said i've been eating too many Cheetos and too many snacks so <laughs> I need all the contouring I can get to hide the blubber. For the contouring of your jawline, there's two different ways you can do it. If you have a more like kind of rounder jaw like I do, I don't really have that like sharp jawline that I wish I had. Even if I were skinny, I have a really round jaw. If you want to achieve a more like Kind of angled jaw it's obviously it's not going to look like adina menzel's jawline but you'll get some kind of jawline you want to go down and across and always make sure you're going under your jawline because if you go above it you don't give yourself a five o'clock shadow but i mean if that's the look you're going for do it <laughs> and then if you want a more rounded jaw you would just follow more so your natural contours so just go right alongside your jaw and bring it down but I prefer the sharper jaw, so I do kind of go a little bit down and then across. I'm already starting to look more alive. As for setting powder, it, since I used a um, cream contour, I didn't set my face yet because you want to make sure you put that on. Put all your liquids and creams first and then you can, con you can set with a powder. The setting powder that I'm using today was only $3 because it's an e.l.f. powder and it's actually really good. It's a good dupe for if you've ever heard of the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Airbrush Setting Powder, something like that. I didn't put too much powder up here just because I'm going to still carve out my brows once I put them on with some concealer. But everything else is pretty set. Now I'm going to go in with some bronzer. Bronzer is a little bit different as far as the tools that you want to use. You don't want to use anything that's too dense, otherwise you'll give yourself too much of a harsh line. You want to go with something a little bit more fluffy, just like this guy. I think this is an Ilia brush. I don't know what the name, I think. There's a number five on it, so I'm assuming it's the Ilia brush number five. The bronzer that I'm using is the Anastasia Beverly Hills powder. Now bronzer is just going to go right on top of your contour. You're just going to buff that in, or not buff it in, but kind of sweep it down your face. Bronzer, like I said, you can put anywhere that the sun hits you. So I put it on my cheekbones, but you can also put it like on your nose. Some people bring it up to their forehead a little bit. Some people like to do a little bit on the chin. With baking, what you want to do is you want to pick a little bit up with your sponge so that there's a pretty like good coating on here. And press it on. I usually do under the eyes. I'll do a little bit on the bridge of my nose and a little bit on our chin oh you could also do a little bit underneath your contour just like that so that it sharpens up your contour while i let this setting powder sit and bake and do its job i'm gonna go in and do my brows the brow product i'm using is the anastasia beverly hills brow wiz my favorite way to start and the easiest way i've found to start your brows is you want to start from the bottom of your brow lining all of that up pretty much sketching out your brow a lot of people will make the mistake of just like going ham and filling everything out right away so start from the bottom and kind of feather everything out underneath and make sure you're feathering things make sure you're not just doing a harsh line, you wanna make sure you're feathering everything. Really important too, you wanna to make sure you don't hold your pencil all the way up here. If you hold your pencil up here, you're just gonna get 
way harsher lines you're gonna have less control and you're putting on way too much pressure creating more product to go on than you need to and then after I do the bottom part of my brow I don't jump right into filling it out I do the tail next so I'll start at like the half point of my brow and come out and bring it down and connect it to the other line that I drew So you should pretty much have like an outline of a brow that isn't filled in. Now you can start filling it in. This is where I usually do like to go in with the spoolie just to blend everything out in case I made too much of like a harsh line. I'll blend everything out and up just in case there's some harsh lines in there. I'm gonna use the same concealer I used on my, under my eyes to carve out my brow. I don't like to go too ham when it comes to carving out my brows unless I'm gonna do a more dramatic look. I usually just stick to cleaning up the bottom of my brow and that's it. A lot of people like to carve out the entire brow. They'll go up on the top too. I just like going underneath the brow. I feel like that's all you really need because it lifts the brow, it opens up the eyes a little bit more and you can bring it down to be like a base for your eyeshadow too. I feel like I'm getting flashbacks to all those Thanksgivings that we spent hours getting ready just to hang around our living rooms and listen to our tias talk shit about other tias that weren't at the reunion. Oh, hello, Peanut! I have a child that was requesting attention. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> She's like, what doing, mama? So for we're gonna be doing my one of my favorite uh, looks. This is what I consider an everyday go-to. We're gonna do a little bit of a smoky liner. First step that we're gonna do, you can choose pretty much any color you want for your base. Whatever color you choose to do is up to you. I'm just gonna go in with black. This is one of those looks that's gonna look like kind of a hot mess at first, but as you start blending everything out and adding a little bit of color, it kind of comes together. Once you've placed that on, you want to go in with a dense brush. If you own any Anastasia Beverly Hills eyeshadow palette, they all come with this little brush. I know most eyeshadow palettes, the brushes that they come with are kind of bad, but I personally love the Anastasia ones. I use them a lot. But once you've got your eyeliner on, you want to start kind of blending that out and softening it. And then using that same side of your brush, you want to pick up a little bit of a black shadow. I'm using from the Alyssa Edwards palette, just this guy, because it's one of my favorite black shadows that I own. And I'm going to pack that right on top of that. And I do like to bring it down under my eye too. Once you start blending in some color, it's important to pack instead of like buff everything on. So I'm going to pick up from the Anastasia Jackie Ina palette, this color called Edges, because it's a little bit like a rusty orange color, which kind of matches my dress. Keep in mind, these are pressed pigments. So once you pick them up, they are going to have a little bit of fallout, which is why it's important to have a slightly stickier base and to pack instead of buffing on like you would with a regular shadow. I always like to keep a clean brush at hand because if you need to make the edges look softer, you don't really want to go in with the brush that's got product on it and in little circles go along the sides of it. That pretty much looks pretty good. I think I can go in now with the liquid liner. And if you notice, I didn't bring my pencil liner or my gel liner all the way in. I didn't bring my shadow all the way either because we're going to fill that in with the liquid liner. So starting as close to the lash line as you can using the side of your liner not the tip of it for my eye shape i feel like i want to lift it a little bit more instead of drooping it down so i do like to bring the black shadow up a little tiny bit more once i've put the liquid liner just like this and always packing especially because this brush is so dense I don't want to buff things out with it because it's going to pick up other product. It might disrupt the liner that's underneath. I think that looks pretty good. I'm just going to dust off the powder that I had on my face. Baking will catch most of the fallout. The powder that you use to bake will catch most of the fallout. So when you dust it off, it does soft all that fallout with it. 
and then you're left with a nice clean face. Now I'm gonna put on a little bit of blush. The blush that I'm using is from, I don't even know if I should be saying KVD now or Kat Von D because I'm still so used to it and nobody knows what the hell I'm talking about when I say KVD, but it's from them and it's their everlasting blush called Poppy. They smooth the skin really nicely because they're a little bit more like, I want to say they're a little more silicone based than most blushes are because they feel super silky when you touch them. You literally only need a teensy tiny bit, so just barely kiss your brush onto the product and tap off your excess, just like that. That even might be a little too much, but I am a slut for blush, so it's all good. I like putting this on the apples of my cheeks and bringing it back. And I also like to bring it into my eyeshadow and up onto my temples. This is a really pretty color. I didn't think I was gonna like it, but it's really nice. For highlighter, I don't know if I wanna go real bougie and use this Tom Ford one that I have that I haven't used in a really long time or my usual Fenty, but I'm feeling kind of bougie, so I'm gonna use the Tom Ford one. I don't even know if they still sell this anymore. I haven't used it in a long time. But when I did use it, I used the hell out of it, but you can tell how much I used it by how worn out it is. Highlighter is one of those things that I feel like is personal preference too. You can go as like blinding as you want. You can go as subtle as you want. I don't like my highlighter to be too crazy just because I'm oily, like I said. So even though I'm looking a little dry right now, later on in the day, once my oil starts seeping through, I'm gonna look like I've got my own natural highlight. I also like to put a little bit on my cupid's bow just to create a bigger pout. I'm gonna put on a little bit of mascara now before I pop on my lashes. I'm using the Fenty Beauty mascara. The brush on this guy is pretty cool too. I feel like it's kind of gimmicky, I'm gonna be honest, but I a lot of people are obsessed with it. It's like big and like ovally, and then when you turn it to the side, it's flat. When you use the flat side, it gives you more length, and then the like this more rounded side gives you more volume. Does it really? I don't think so. <laughs> but that's what it's supposed to do. I've also seen some people get kind of like fancy with it and they turn the brush, but I'm not coordinated enough to do that. <laughs> so I usually just use the, the more rounded side and then wiggle and tug and that gives me the lift and volume that I want. Especially since I'm gonna be using lashes, it doesn't really matter. You just want more lift than anything. <laughs> I feel like it's impossible to put mascara on without making a stupid face. Oh, these are so pretty. I almost don't even want to say where I got these because every time I tell people where I get my lashes from, they're like, oh my God. Where these lashes come from will remain anonymous for now. <laughs> oh, I'm finally going to try out the new glue that was recommended to me because I'm allergic to duo lash glue. So I'm trying out a new one, the House of Lashes glue, which is a very popular lash glue because everybody says this, this thing will stick like no other. Oh, these look so pretty. I know most people would see these and be like, oh, those are too big, but this is very natural for me. Oh, I'm a fan. It's so cute. These are so cute. The thing with these lashes is that you can order the same one multiple times, but they always look different. <laughs> like these, I've bought these pairs before and they were really different and more fluffy the first time I got them. They're not very consistent, but for the price, I'm not angry. Now I'm do jumping into lipstick since we're almost done here. The lips lip liner that I'm using is my all-time favorite color lip liner and pretty much my favorite lip liner brand. It's from Pat McGrath. It's their, it's in the shade Contour. Oh, it's so blurry. It's in the shade Contour. It's like a really pretty kind of like nude taupey color. And as far as lip lining goes, everybody's different. Some people like to lip line, like over lip line a lot. Some people like to just like underline. Some people like to just follow their natural shape. I only up overline the top lip, but I just go slightly above my natural lip line. So that, especially like in pictures, you can't really tell that it's overlined unless I go more dramatic. And 
And then the lipstick I'm using is the Marc Jacobs uh, New Nudes lipstick in the shade Anais. It was on sale for 20 bucks, so I had to have it. Plus, look how pretty this color is. Look at it. It's a lot more like glossy than I thought it was gonna be. And also a lot lighter than I thought it was gonna be too. But I'm feeling it, it's nice. I think that pretty much completes this look. I'm gonna spray with a little bit of a facial mist. I'm using the Glow Recipe Watermelon Mist, which smells like a Jolly Rancher. Oh, it smells so good. I guess that pretty much wraps up this look. So I know it wasn't the best. It is my first video. Please be gentle. Um, I would really appreciate any kind of feedback, any other suggestions you can make for me, any questions you might have, anything else you'd like to see really, any topics as far as talking. But if you've made it this far, I appreciate you. Thank you for watching the first of hopefully many to come. Thank you for joining me and I hope you enjoyed. Bye. Thank you.